got problems with fungus gnats? Us too. Watch this video for tips on how to deal with them. Hello everyone, welcome back to Spoodopods. I'm David and today's video we're discussing fungus gnats. They're a common pest for many people who keep house plants, inverts, all sorts of creatures that require a soil substrate and they're quite annoying. So I thought I'd discuss in this video a little bit about them, why they occur, how they occur and also what you can do about them to get rid of them. Now fungus gnats are an incredibly common pest. If you have any sort of house plant, any sort of invert that requires a soil substrate, even reptiles that require any sort of humidity, you're going to get fungus gnats. It doesn't make you a bad keeper. If you're new to keeping inverts and they suddenly crop up, it's okay, don't worry, it's perfectly normal. They are annoying, but they are completely harmless. They don't bite or anything, they're just pests and fly around and generally cause trouble. However, when you have lots of them, it is worth dealing with them because if you have a whole swarm, it's just not very aesthetically pleasing. They can bother smaller inverts and they're obviously competing for resources in that soil. So, you know, it's ideal to at least try and moderate their population if you can in whatever way is possible. Now, fungus gnats are attracted to high humidity environments. They also love to lay their eggs in soil. All you need is a couple of them, and before long, you'll have loads of larvae, and before long, you'll have a whole swarm. Again, don't feel bad if this happens. It does happen. You can even have it if you have a nice, I, I, I suppose you call it a sterile environment, you know, a nice safe environment that will come in from inside, and you will have a problem. It, Sadly, it's just one of those things that happens because for a lot of inverts, you have to have high humidity. You know, jumping spiders will need it, especially during molting. If you're keeping mantises, certain types of tarantulas, reptiles, that humidity is necessary. So it's going to be part of the problem with keeping them. But there are some ways you can at least moderate their populations and start to deal with them. Now, the very first and easiest way you can start dealing with your fungus gnat problem is traps. We have these little yellow traps which are shaped in all sorts of funny um, shapes and sizes. We got them from Amazon and they're quite effective. You know, the fungus gnats will be attracted to the colour, they'll land on them and then they're done. It's not a, a foolproof method because obviously you can't put traps in all the enclosures, although my next point will cover a little bit of that, but it is a good way of starting to get rid of them without being too invasive or causing yourself too much trouble. You can put these traps in some enclosures. Lots of people sellotape them to the ceilings of their isopod enclosures. It's very really important not to do this if you have a jumping spider or any sort of invert or creature that's going to go towards the ceiling. But in stuff like isopods, it's completely safe because your isopods will never go up there. But you can sellotape them to the ceiling. The fungus gnats will come out and they'll go straight there and be gravitated towards them. So it's a very effective way of catching them in enclosures that do not have invert pets that go up there. One of the best ways to kind of prevent them and sort of almost outcompete them before they start is having bioactive substrate, which includes a springtail culture, so maybe some dwarf isopods, or even certain types of ant. These are all very useful things you can have down there. Now, the ants won't be appropriate for all enclosures, so do research that first. However, the dwarf isopods and the springtails, especially the springtails, can go in almost anything. And it's just a very way of outcompeting them before they start. Those creatures will eat all the resources that the gnats will go for, or in some cases actually eat the gnats. If you've got larger enclosures, then get larger isopods, and those will eat the fungus gnat eggs and larvae before they can hatch. Again, stopping the problem before it starts. It's a highly effective method, and while you will sometimes get population boosts of the fungus gnats, once the springtails are established, they just won't really have an opportunity to compete, and it just stops them from, like, it stops them from breeding before they can even start, if that makes any sense. Something we're starting to consider purely because we kind of like the idea is carnivorous plants. Now we're researching this quite carefully because we have parrots, we don't want them coming in and accidentally eating them or anything like that. But carnivorous plants can be very useful for keeping fungus gnats and other pests under control. Just make sure you don't have them actually in the enclosures because that's obviously a threat to your spiders and whatever else. But having them outside could be really good. Just like with the traps, they'll fly on there, they'll get eaten and it'll reduce the population. The other sort of benefit of them is they can be quite aesthetically pleasing. It's a lot less, a lot more subtle than having traps. And again, if you like carnivorous plants, it's just another sort of thing you can have in your environment that's fun to enjoy. You can also make your own homemade traps. We use these little goo ramekins, which we put some liquid in with some sugar, or you can use um, honey, all sorts of things. Basically something that's sweet and attractive to the gnats. And they sort of just fall into it, they get trapped, and then they can't get out again. I've got an example in this video which I'll show now of just one with a goo ramekin, some liquid. It's 
to be perfectly honest with you, we're not, we haven't really mastered it yet, but I know a lot of people have had great success with it. It is something worth trying, and again, it's very inexpensive and easy to do. Now, the last tip I actually picked up from Aquarium Max Pets, it's very useful, it's a very good channel, by the way, especially if you like isopods, and it is using a fabric or sort of mesh over your sort of holes, because the fungus gnats will get through the tiniest holes, they will get into enclosures, it's almost inevitable. So these fabric meshes can be very useful because they're still breathable, your um, animals will not suffer for having them. However, they will stop the fungus gnats from getting inside. Now, I know this is not practical for every single enclosure, but it is worth considering. Fabrics like organza, very fine meshes are worth looking at just in case you can prevent the problem before it starts. So guys, that's it. That's my guide to dealing with fungus gnats. Again, a very common pest. They will get into enclosures through um, air holes. They're harmless, but very annoying. So if you have any problems with them, do consider the tips in this video. If you have any tips of your own, happy to hear from you. would love to hear more tips about dealing with them. Any questions, comments, as always, happy to hear from you guys. But in the meantime, from me and the Swarm, take care and see you later.